Bethro Budkin strolled into the grand dining chamber where King Dugan was finishing his massive morning meal. Away, foul commoner! You disrupt my digestion with your poor hygiene! bellowed the king with bits of pork and potatoes erupting from his mouth. But sir, protested Bethro, you sent for me. The expression on the king's large face changed from anger to confusion to recognition to geniality in the space of two seconds. I really should have had you come in sooner, said King Dugan. It's unbelievable! You let your guards eat their meals down in a dungeon, they spread crumbs all over the place, and all of a sudden the place is just swarming with cockroaches! Not to mention goblins, serpents, evil eyes, and other nasty things. It's really gotten out of hand! Bethro straightened with pride. Not to fear, I am a trained professional from a long line of dungeon exterminators. I combined five generations of passed down knowledge with the most state-of-the-art equipment to offer efficient extermination service at an affordable price. What kind of equipment do you use? I've got a really big sword. Good! When can you start? As soon as we handle the details of payment, here are my standard extermination fees. Just sign at the bottom. Bethro handed a contract to the king. These prices are outrageous! Is the privilege of honorable service to the crown worth nothing these days? I can leave. No, no, no! We need that dungeon cleared so that the prisoners can receive their torture in a clean and safe environment! Well, I'll give you a discount if you throw in a princess. You're ugly and you smell bad! None of my daughters will have you! Bethro shrugged. Fair enough. The king signed at the bottom of the contract. Right then, let me show you to the entrance. With an accompaniment of ten soldiers, Bethro made his way to a large metal door covered from top to bottom with locks, bolts, and chains. He unlocked and opened the door with a ring of keys handed to him. The soldiers shrunk back, swords drawn, as the door creaked open to reveal a descending staircase. Far down below, Bethro could see oily, black cockroaches skittering about. Those cockroaches are as big as I am, he exclaimed. Just get down there, said the king, and some of the soldiers forcefully helped Bethro through the doorway. The door slammed shut behind him and the locks were rapidly put back on. He heard a muffled yell from the other side. Don't come back until you're done! Hey everyone, Surreal Canine here. Now, I bet some of you have never heard of this game before. Drod, or Deadly Rooms of Death, is a turn-based, tile-based, dungeon-crawling puzzle game created in the 1990s by Eric Hermanson. It was initially a game for DOS known as Swordplay that made its rounds across a few bulletin board systems in 1993. The game may still be sitting on a floppy disk or hard drive somewhere in the world, but I wouldn't know where. The series' first commercial release came in 1997 when the Windows version of Drod was published by Webfoot Games. Unfortunately, it did not sell very well, so the project was quietly dropped from Webfoot's website after a few years. Eric got permission from Webfoot to create an open source release of Drod and released it in 2002 under the banner of Caravel Games. Together with Mike Reimer, Matt Shikor, and others, Eric continued development and released Drod Architects Edition in 2003, which included a level editor. This application is open source and can still be downloaded for free from Caravel Games' website. You can find a link in the video description. Meanwhile, a French company called TLK made a remake of the game with 3D graphics, and it's still viable from their website for $1. That's not important right now, though. In 2005, Caravel released a sequel called Journey to Rooted Hold, with a brand new engine that has continued to evolve since then. Future Drod releases would then come in 2007, 2012, and 2014, with one spin-off release in 2008, and several user-made level packs, or holds, receiving support from Caravel and being released as Smite Masters selections in the years between. The game still has a community to this day with a group of very dedicated hold architects and a few people competing to optimize scores as well. I discovered the series in 2018 when Drod was name dropped by Xeno Rogue as an inspiration for his non Euclidean roguelike Hyper Rogue. Like Drod, the game is turn based and tile based, combat is a matter of tactics and wits rather than character stats, and some monsters native to Drod even make appearances. I blasted through the entire series over the next six months and became 136th Skywatcher, a title awarded upon completing the final game in the series with a good ending. Since then, I've been popping in and out to help the community complete a mega hold with the codename Entry Point, which at present is on track to be released sometime next year. If any members of the community or development team is watching this, I invite you to talk about these games in the comments. Just be sensitive about story spoilers for my viewers who haven't played these games before. You're also invited to my Discord server where I voice chat on my streams. 
The link will be in this series' of thread in the forums and displayed on screen in future videos. As for my plans for this series, I plan to play all of the official holds. These consist of the five major titles, all of the Smite Master selections, and Drawed RPG Tendry's Tale. I also plan to play Entry Point once it's finally released. Due to the anachronic order in which the canon holds were released, I will be playing in my own order that balances narrative continuity with mechanical progression. What I mean by this is that I will be playing all of the canon holds first, save for a few that don't add to the story spanning most of the series. Then I'll play the remaining canon holds, followed by non-canon holds, and finally Entry Point. I'll be clearing every required room, every secret room, and every challenge, though I may get stuck and have to skip some optional content temporarily while I work out a solution or ask other players for help. I'll be juggling this project with Disgaea 6 until that project has ended, so for now, all the draws will be streamed Tuesday nights, starting between 6 and 7 p.m. U.S. Eastern Time. If I manage to finish Disgaea 6 within a few weeks, that'll also free up my Saturday afternoon stream slot, which usually starts between 10 a.m. and 12 p.m. Again, U.S. Eastern Time. Once my classes begin again at the end of August, I'll have to reevaluate how much time I have available for my solo streams, and as a result, this project may be removed to my Sunday night streams. We'll have to see. If you want to be notified when I'm streaming, either follow me on Twitch or Twitter, or join the Discord. Again, links are in the video description. After each episode is uploaded to YouTube, I will be posting an update in the thread for this series on the Caravel forums. I think I said all I need to about the series and this project for now. Barring any craziness happening, I'll be seeing you guys in a few days. Until then, happy smiting.